So we're down on the pit now with Charlie. And uh, what are we looking at? The front truck? We're looking at the front truck on the number 18. Which is missing. Yes, it is missing. Um, that's the actual piece that we were showing earlier uh, in the front of the shop there. Um, anyhow, when we first received this locomotive, uh, there was reports we had uh, things were running hot when we dragged it up light. And uh, it had been this way for a long, long time, it seemed. Anyhow, this front truck was frozen. Oh, wow. Meaning the suspension part of it wasn't, wasn't moving at all? Well, um, it's kind of the suspension. It's actually really important. Um, this was what I'm going to explain here, um, was the major contribution and factors leading to why we're doing such extensive work on the front truck axle, the tires, and the journals. Um, this was the cause of it. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, little things like this can lead to big and expensive repairs if you don't address it. Well, I know the lack of maintenance on this goes back decades, right, to when it was in Eureka or... Yureka. Yureka, sorry, yeah. Well, the, the Yureka had purchased this engine from McLeod in the, the 50s and they were, you know, dieselization had already started. And at that time, they figured most of these would reach the torch, so they weren't going to put a lot of money into it. Reach the torch means being scrapped. Scrapped, okay, yes. Okay, gotcha. And uh, so, you know, that's, it was like this all across the United States in short lines. Just enough to get by. Wow. And um, so anyhow, it sat for 30 years or so in Wyreek after it blew out the cylinder, the piston. And, uh, and finally, the McLeod purchased it and restored it. And... Uh, but they did more of a, a cosmetic restoration? Well, or? no, they, they did a lot on boiler and so forth, but the way they saw it, you know, was they only ran it so often. So it wasn't necessarily uh, effective for them to put that much money into the running gear because they were only running it 15 times a year. Okay, sure. So for them, it, was, it didn't make sense. Okay, it's running and that's fine for what we needed to do. Gotcha. When it comes here to the V&T, we needed to do more. But we, in order for it to get, get it out of this engine, we got to put some life back into it so we can get that expectation out of it. And anyhow, what happened was this whole entire swing link here, the truck, this is what guides the number one and the rest of the engine around curves. It was frozen. This thing kind of rocks back and forth like this. This was completely frozen. Wow. So what happens is when it was go around curves, was it would get smashed up because of flanges, right, on your axles. And it would get smashed up into the boxes where your hub liners are. Okay. And it would start galling and chewing up and everything like that. And it also caused the journals to run hot too because things were tight. Now, I'm not sure I know what a hub liner is. Is that something we're looking at here? Or? Well, a hub liner is on the wheel sets okay. in the boxes, but the hub liners are essentially, you know, would be right about here. But anyhow, because this did not move and swing properly, it caused excessive wearing and a lot of money to spend on machining and truing things up. So um, we fixed that before we put it into uh, operation last year and sent it to the movie. That was, it was not going anywhere until we resolved that. And uh, when it finally let go loose, we had to jack the engine up and use a jack and push on it on the sides. We oiled it though with a special mixture of everything we could just put in there and get things free and moving up and so forth for, for about a month and a half before wow. we decided to go for it. Wow. And when it, when it broke free, it made a horrendous popping sound. Wow. Like just things giving way. But it moved so freely like it should be. Anyhow, we, we went ahead and, you know, it's been working fine ever since, but the damage had already been done on everything else, so yeah. that's why we have it apart. And maybe, maybe I missed, uh, what's, the, what's the reason why this thing wasn't moving in the first place? Was just rust or just uh, built up of decay or...? Uh, dirt got inside the oil holes, plugged everything up. So you can add oil all you want, but it ain't going so to get to the parts. So people might think they were lubricating it, but they, yep. if they didn't really look inside there, okay, that makes sense. We, uh, before when we received the engine, before we put it into service, we went through and cleaned out every oil hole we could. Everything. We would crawl around and needle scale the frame and everything so we could see if there's cracks and just, you know, keep it cleans, it keeps things, makes it easy for inspections and yeah. um, so forth. So, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it needed a lot of work, but not getting enough oil lubrication. That can 
kill it'll, things it'll, fast. It'll, it'll hurt you. And so. I guess what people don't necessarily realize is that this work's been going on for over a year now, because you guys got this back in February of 2010, I think? Well, we, re we received uh, the 18, um, it was or no, July late, late 28th nine. of 2009. Oh, wow. It was when it arrived in Eastgate. Okay. Um, we took things down to facilitate the dry move up to Virginia City. Which means, shops. I remember seeing that you towed it up with the diesel, basically. You right. You took, took all down the rods. Mains, took the mains off, took the eccentrics, you know, and uh, that's when we discovered, you know, the big uh, crank pin issue. Anyhow, uh, you know, we went through everything uh, grease pin wise, took them all apart, cleaned them because there was rag stuck in them. So it wasn't getting grease, oh my the rest of the stuff. Wow. And that can in dirt, you know, if you drop a grease when you're greasing it and you try to pick it up and brush it, you know, you know, it's, that grease is done. Get yourself new grease. Right, okay. But foreign objects getting inside. And it's hard not to, but when you get rags and stuff like that, you kind of have to wonder. And Yeah. But well, that's why we would go through things like this when you receive it from other uh previous users. Yeah, and well with the nature of this whole reconstruction project, you want this locomotive good for decades. So I mean, Well yes, and you have people and time schedules to keep. If you don't go like over a thorough inspection of what you have when you receive something, you don't know what you have. Yeah. So you have to go through it and uh, you know, this is not knocking other people, but this is This is the this is a real railroad, yeah. This is what yeah. needs to happen for it to be dependable and, you know, do its service. And How we want it to do it. And it's funny you mentioned inspections. Another time we'll sit down and look at the FRA book that you guys have to work out of. But that's we're we're gonna probably wrap this up pretty soon and just look at a couple more spots. So let's. Uh, what's the next thing you want to go look at here? Um, the next thing we just want to go ahead and look at on this engine is uh, we're just gonna take a quick little brief at, inside the cab. Oh, cool. And yeah, that, that's I wanted to see that because the firebox is open right now. Yeah, we got the people. Fire. And without the tender, you can get a good shot in there. So we'll take a look. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and quickly look at that. Okay, cool. Well, here it is. Number 18. Not the number 18 he's wearing on his shirt. That's a different one. Yeah, that's a Carson of Colorado narrow gauge engine. Gotcha. In fact, let's show people that real quick. There you go. Number 18. That's, that's another project that you're working on. Which right. Is another story. That's another story for another time. But uh, if you get a chance, you should go uh, go ahead and look at it online. CarsonColorado.com. Or if people are in Independence. Right. Independence, California. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on. So let me, let, me, let me just set it to where I'm in the shot, too. You can be in the shot. Okay, we're going to take a quick stop here with Charlie and Tiger Man Don Bachman, but we didn't really look at this wheel set. Oh, sorry, Don. We didn't really look at this wheel set yet. Railroads are a dangerous place, especially when you have a camera sticking out of your chest. <laughs> so, can you just tell us real quick what we're looking at here? Uh, what we're looking at is the front wheel set uh, for the pony, front pony truck of the 18. Um, you have tires that go, they're shrink fit onto here. Um, we decided just to go ahead and replace those because, well, we couldn't get a turn out of them because it would be too thin minimum thickness wise. And the tire, the tire's missing right now. This is it is. So there, there would be something with a thickness and a flange. Just a right. Flange. And in order to do that, you got to heat them up to like about 600 degrees and they expand and uh, you tap them on over here and then you let them cool and they shrink on. And uh, essentially it's an interference fit. And that's something you do here. That's something we do here, wow, yeah. that's amazing. Okay. But anyhow, we had things kind of cleaned up here on the face here just because, you know, if you have it out, do it. And uh, we turned down the journals because they were tapered. Okay. And that makes it easy to pour new bearings too. Let me get in here and get a quick shot of this and then we'll move on to the next thing. Hang on, because that's kind of interesting and people can't really see that. Second thing here. Okay, I'm just going to grab this just to kind of show how the, you know. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so. This is obviously the, a broken one, but this will give you an idea. This is a bearing, and it would go on top of it like here. And then a box goes on top of this, and that fits inside the jaws. That's how this works. And then pull that off so people can see. There's wow, the that's, journal surface. That's, so that's ready to go. That's like beautiful. That's ready to go. That's trimmed down, and that will be ready for us to go ahead and pour the batter. And just before, before we move into the cab, what's the tolerance on that? Like, I mean, uh, how, how, how true is it? You know, like, how, how close to perfect circle is it within... Oh, it's... It's perfect, or it's within five thousandths of an inch? It was turned or? on the lathe, so... Oh, okay. Wow. They're both the same diameter now, and they have a surface, they have a finished, a finished surface here that's acceptable for Babbitt. And you said that was, uh, that was tapered. That's, when you say it's tapered, that was worn out, you mean? Yeah, it was out of round. Wow. And that occurs over time of use. Sure. So... Cool. Well, all right, let's go to the cab, and we'll wrap this up.
Okay, so it's rolling here. So we're gonna just take a final tour of the cab. We got three minutes of tape. So go ahead and tell us what's up, Charlie. Uh, what we have here is just the cab of the 18. Um, there was a, a valve up here that controlled the air pump from inside that was uh, stripped out the threads and so forth when we received it. We put a, a secondary valve just outside for the time being. Okay. Because these valves that we have to get are very pricey and they're uh, right angle ones, so we didn't have the time because we had to kind of replumb it and repipe fit it. And you had to get it in service. We had to get it in service. So we did a, a quick fix by putting a valve on the outside to control it okay. until we could get the time to do it. So we put a new valve inside here. Um, what, what valve is it, just so people know? It's this one right here. This is an extension. It's sitting off of the main turret. Well, what does that actually control? That controls the air pump. It allows steam to go to the air pump to generate air for the brakes I gotcha. on the rest of the train and the locomotive. It's kind of important. Very important. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, uh, we replace that. We lap all valves every year and repack them. So there's no steam blowing out, which could be you know dangerous for the operators, the fireman and the engineer. And uh, we redone the, uh, the, uh, the oil valve here. The oil valve is very touchy. You might have noticed in several videos it'd be burning pretty clean and then it would just go black Vesuvius smoke and huh? that was just because it was worn up uh, pins and uh, it wasn't set right too. So we went ahead and took the slop out of it and made it smooth now. And uh, so went ahead and did that this winter too and uh, we've cleaned up, uh, took apart both ejectors once more again, lapped them, repacked them, made sure they were good to go because those are important for putting water in the boiler. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and paint this uh, black, this back head, oh, okay. because it's too bright for the engine crew's oh, reflection. Right. And uh, we put on new tricocks here because the old ones, they were just very, very small and they were very hard for the operators to reach. And, uh, so we went ahead and put new ones on there. They're a lot easier to deal with. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually running out of tape, which is going to control the end of this video. And so is there anything you want to say as a parting shot and then we'll come back and take another look sometime? Uh, the only thing I have really to say is this, this is just the little things that go on here. I mean, we have the operations and the daily stuff, but this is little things that keep these things going that we need to. Uh, if we don't have to do these things, we can lead to road failures, and no one likes that when they're, yeah. they're coming up from Carson and they get want bad, to get to Virginia City. You get bad reviews on TripAdvisor when that happens. Right, yeah, you get bad reviews, and we don't, we don't want that. And, it's it's the right thing to do. It's all about the right thing. Cool. Well, Charlie, thanks for taking the time to do this, and uh, we'll come back and do some more. Okay. I appreciate you guys stopping by. All right. Thanks. See you.